Mike, who's next? Yeah, so first of all, happy to be here on Thanksgiving 101. Uh, this has been <laughs> uh, fun. So yeah, in Axis AM, we said a lot more to come, and here's why. So for months, Silicon Valley has been having its uh, harassment secrets spilled, a lot of uh, founders who were exposed in that wave. It's now seven weeks since the New York Times uh, dropped its expose on Weinstein, and since then, uh, Hollywood uh, has had uh, this, this domino of revelations. But three more big areas to come. So we saw the first of the Capitol Hill revelations this week. We found about this fund to pay settlements that people who've worked all their life at the Capitol didn't know about. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Much more could be coming about members of Congress. Second, we know about media investigations now underway about media figures in New York and DC. So media has more to come. And third, the business world has barely been touched. That's an area where your viewers well know is not immune. Mike, what's your view in terms of the possibility to survive in current careers, whichever field it might be, when people don't admit guilt? C clearly with the, the likes, likes of uh, Harvey Weinstein, of uh, Charlie Rose, of Kevin Spacey, they made statements that showed some admission of, of wrongdoing and it's led uh, to, to their careers uh, be, being uh, cut uh, short or at least temporarily cut short pretty quickly. What about when people deny allegations? They continue to fight against them uh, and there's no outright criminal wrongdoing in terms of those accusations. Do you think those people will be able to weather this storm or not? Well, what we've seen so far is that most of the high profile cases in the places where there was an admission of guilt was where there was repeated situations, many of them similar. And uh, in some cases, in the case of Senator Al Franken, Democrat of Minnesota, a photo. So very difficult to deny there. Your question about whether or not you deny or admit will be fascinating as we move into the business world. So I'm told that more so than the C-suite or the corporate side, the real vulnerability is on Wall Street. People who came in perhaps with the 1980s mentality kept that. Uh, there's a lot of you, you, uh, Mike, let me well ask you, you know that for a fact, you know, specific individuals that you're waiting to come forward because you're aware of that or or is it just you're guessing because it's so male dom dominated. And the reason I ask is that, I mean, all this stuff that we're reading about in Hollywood, I mean, Wall Street in the 80s, give me a break. There was so much that went down that there was a lot of corporate uh, governance interference, so to speak, to try to clean up the situation. You know, I mean, you go back and read. Michael Lewis's book, I don't know that they have strippers on the trading floors anymore. I think it's been more than a decade since that kind of thing happened. Supposedly, they had tried to clean up their act because it was so bad. No, I think that that's right. What our reporting shows is people on the street believe that there are people who have sort of kept that mentality. Perhaps Wall Street is immune. Uh, if you think that, uh, that's uh, uh, very possible. But uh, our reporting shows there are people on the Wall Street who are worried and who think that they're definitely you know is vulnerability. You know names. You know specific names. Uh, so uh, what I'm saying is that our reporting shows that people on Wall Street uh, believe that there is vulnerability. Uh, okay. Do you think? And it sounds like you're skeptical of that. Do no, you no, no. Think I'm just, I'm just, no, I'm, I want to know if you know that there, there's a name yeah. coming that we should all be watching yeah. for, and you just can't reveal it yet because, obviously, until the facts are in place. You, you can't do it, right? right? That's all. I'm not trying uh, to be combative, actually, even though yeah. that's my tendency. No, but it, but, uh, it, it sounds like you think that in the 1980s it was cleaned up, and it sounds like you are skeptical. I think it was so rampant for so long, uh, you know. But Wolf covers the banks, not me here. Well, yeah, <laughs> well, I cover that side of it. Mike, um, in terms of the broader question of sort of trial by media, trial by television and newspapers, is there a problem broadly in your eyes with that? Do you think this should be taking a more formal line, or... Are you happy with the way that the media is executing on these various stories when they get their hands on them? Well, uh, the media has uh, been uh, not only very aggressive in showing their own reporting, but uh, the media is a place that women can go who have stories to tell, who perhaps have been frustrated in the past. Either they didn't uh, report it to law enforcement and perhaps wish they did. Perhaps they did report it within uh, their own a corporate structure, their reporting structure, and uh, didn't feel like they were taken seriously. Perhaps it was a case like uh, Charlie Rose where there wasn't a clear reporting structure for people. So the media now has become an outlet for people who are emboldened to tell their stories, perhaps have stories that are very worth telling, and they didn't know where exactly where to go or 
they weren't taken seriously. Now, what we're seeing in this new environment is these stories are being taken extremely seriously as they should be. And Mike, just very quickly, in terms of the, the stories you expect to hit in, in coming weeks on, on the C-suite, on the corporate world, are these historic issues? Or do you think, in, in, sense, in that sense, has corporate governance changed enough that these aren't things that have happened in the last decade, or are there fresh issues to come out as well? Uh, perhaps they have been mitigated by uh, some of the corporate uh, governance uh, changes. I can tell you, I was just uh, uh, having another conversation about this this morning. I can tell you that people who've spent their life on Wall Street believe that uh, there are vulnerabilities there, uh, believe that the story won't end in Washington, on Silicon Valley, on Hollywood, that New York will get its day uh, in this harassment story. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.